In North America, in recent years, an increase in the number of millions of gray wolves has become a serious threat to agriculture and human communities. How effective are the countermeasures North Americans are taking to protect their property and themselves from invasive wolves? Join me to learn in the video below about controlling the number of invasive wolves by North American farmers. Origin and number of wolf attacks in North America? Do you know the origin and increase in the number of attacks of invasive wolves? They originated from Eurasia and migrated to North America about 1 million years ago. Today, wolves are widely distributed in North America from the Arctic Ocean in the north to Mexico in the south. In Canada, an average of about 50 coyote attacks on humans and pets were recorded each year between 2010 and 2020. Why are accidents increasing in urban areas? Some communities believe that due to human development, the natural habitat of wolves is shrinking. This causes them to go into the city in search of food and shelter. If you encounter an invasive coyote for the first time, I recommend that you stay calm, do not scream or run away, and slowly back away. On the evening of October 2023, in a suburban neighborhood of Vancouver, Canada, there was a serious incident when an aggressive wolf attacked the pet dog of a young girl named Emily. According to Emily, she was walking her small dog named Buddy in the park near her house when she was suddenly attacked by a large wolf. The ferocious wolf bit Buddy fiercely. The incident happened too quickly, and Emily could not fight back against the wolf. Buddy was seriously injured and could not survive due to the impact of the wolf. Emily also suffered minor injuries from trying to save Buddy. From that serious incident, the impact on Emily's spirit was huge. What do you think when this attack happened to a girl and her pet? Please comment down in the description to share her sadness. Not stopping at urban areas, they attack farms, causing significant economic damage to the livestock industry and affecting the ecosystem. At 40 MPH, it's significantly faster than the average cow running speed of 20 MPH. From that speed, it helped the wolves attack and cause pain to the cows. They often attack the soft parts of cows including the neck and buttocks. According to estimates by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, cattle herds in North America lose about 118 million USD each year due to wolf attacks. In particular, if wolves go alone, they will only attack cows with weak health. When traveling in herds of three or more cows, they will attack healthy cows. Besides, they also attack elk which will affect the ecosystem, which means reducing the number. From the above serious problems, North American governments need to come up with countermeasures to control the wolf population and to reduce human anxiety in urban and farm areas. First, farmers are worried about their safety and the impact on their economy. They installed an electric fence system to prevent the invasion of wolves entering from the jungle. Do you know what you need to prepare to install an electric fence to save the most money? New Zealand brand with more than 80 years of experience in the field of manufacturing electric fence equipment. After preparing the specialized electric wire for the fence, you need to prepare many wooden pillars, and a solar power source will be very convenient. To install a fence, you need to bury the pillars into the ground at a fixed depth. Connect the wires you have prepared to the power supply and check the system's operation. Fence installation time depends on the shape, length of the fence, and the number of construction workers. On average, it takes one to two days to install a fence for one acre of land. 
When you install a fence, you should go with another worker to ensure safety, because electric fences have electrical impulses passing through. Electric fences work by passing a mild electric current through wires. When animals touch electric wires, they will be electrocuted and feel uncomfortable, causing them to stay away from the fenced area. You don't need to worry too much about the safety of electric fences manufactured by the New Zealand brand, because the factory has produced electric fences protected by an insulating cover and an automatic power-off system when an emergency occurs. Problem. Touching the fence only causes discomfort to the wolves, but does not make them feel pain. However, you need to be aware that regulations and policies can change over time, so you need to keep up to date with the latest information from reputable sources to strictly comply with policies on dealing with dog-wolf invasions from local authorities. According to information for North American residents, the minimum height of the fence is usually 6 feet. How many feet high does your area allow for a fence? The above coping methods are only short-term measures. If the number of wolves is not controlled, they will become increasingly aggressive in attacking human safety in residential areas. Wolf hunting season is usually set in winter when wolf numbers are abundant and have little impact on other animals. The specific time of the hunting season may vary by region. Before participating in a hunt, hunters need a valid hunting license to hunt wolves. This permit can be purchased from the local wildlife management agency. After finishing the hunting journey, hunters need to report the number of wolves they have hunted to the wildlife management agency. If you intend to hunt at night, be sure to use a powerful flashlight and wear brightly colored clothing for easy identification. But hunting during the day is safer than at night because you can see more clearly and avoid unwanted dangers. According to estimates by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, hunting has helped reduce the number of wolves in North America to about 400,000 in 2020, compared to about 600,000 in 1990. Helps reduce human conflict, and wolves are very effective. According to experienced hunters, it compares to fox hunting. Hunting wolves can be more dangerous, because wolves are intelligent, ferocious animals and can move quickly, so hunters need to know wolf behavior, the terrain of the hunting area, and how to hunt. Use safe hunting equipment. North American hunters are very interested in daytime camouflage techniques to take down invasive wolves. Camouflage during the day when hunting invasive coyotes helps conceal the hunter's presence, making it easier and safer to reach the target. Cover your body with branches, leaves, or mud to blend in with the surrounding environment. You can apply this hunting method to other invasive species as well. Comment zero if you don't know how to camouflage when hunting. Unlike other regions, people in North America do not use leg traps to deal with invasive coyotes. The use of leg traps to hunt wolves is considered inhumane because the trapped animals must suffer for many hours. Many coyotes can escape traps, resulting in injuries and possibly spreading disease to other animals. Many animal protection organizations in North America have spoken out against the use of leg traps to hunt wolves. They say the use of leg traps is cruel and unnecessary and call for more humane and effective coyote control methods. What do you think about this countermeasure? Does your area apply this control method? Which way of dealing with North Americans do you like? 
please comment below the description. Comment number 2 to let me know you watched the entire video. Click the like button and subscribe to the channel to watch videos on how to deal with invasive species. Wild pigs were brought to Florida in the 1500s by Spanish settlers. The have escaped from farms and naturalized in the wild. They reproduce and cause wild boar populations to increase rapidly. The forests were invaded and destroyed by them at a rapid pace. Swamp puddlers are created during wild boar foraging. Some areas have serious water pollution. To date, Florida has about 2.5 million animals, accounting for about 40% of the total wild boar populations in the United States. Florida state authorities have taken a number of measures to control the invasive wild boar population. Florida farmers and hunters have accessed the forests with blinds to create safe and favorable locations to observe and hunt feral hogs. Choosing such locations not only ensures effectiveness in hunting, but also requires quietness and avoidance of noise so as not to ruin the opportunity to hunt wild boar. When wild boars appear, hunters quickly use hunting tools to take the advantage of the opportunity. The wild boar hunting process can only be carried out in a team model in which support and interaction between team members plays an important role. Teammates not only provide safety, but also supports each other in optimizing hunting strategies, ensuring that every operation takes place effectively and safely. From approach to harvest, bringing success and harvesting more wild boars. Green iguanas are omnivorous reptiles. They eat fruits, vegetables, small animals, and insects. They are able to reproduce quickly. A female can lay from 20 to 60 eggs per year. As a result, the number of green iguanas in Florida has increased rapidly, causing negative effects on the state's natural ecosystem. An estimated 5 million green iguanas lives in Florida, accounting for about 90% of the total iguana population in the United States. The control of green iguana populations has become a great challenge, but the use of measures such as hunting has proven to be an effective option since they often hide in tall trees. Approaching them at a close range becomes difficult. However, in areas such as around lakes or where there is water, they often gather to live. Creating favorable conditions for hunting, this simplifies the process of finding and capturing them, with the ability to catch one animal at a time. In particular, green iguanas in Florida are often larger than those found in the shore areas, which further increases the effectiveness of the hunting method. Their ability to float on water is also an advantage, making it easier to track and approach them. These measures 
have contributed significantly to the reduction of green iguana populations in Florida, providing positive results in habitat control and protection. In the 1930s, monkeys were brought to Florida as pets. Many monkeys have escaped from their owners and naturalized in the wild. The monkey population in Florida has grown to about 4,000 accounting for about 50% of the total number of monkeys in the United States. Additionally, shifting monkey populations to protected areas and flooded forests not only helps protecting farmers from their negative impacts, but also contributes to maintaining ecological balance and in protecting the biological diversity. In this way, efforts to reduce conflicts between humans and apes not only benefits both sides, but also contributes to the protection of the natural environment. This is a great example of how we can find humane and sustainable solutions to live in harmony with other species on our planet. About 20% of pythons are invasive in the Florida region in the United States, creating a unique challenge for local farming communities and residents. This is a carnivore, dangerous not only to the natural environment, but also a formidable partner of farms and residential areas. They often reside mainly in flooded forests, especially in South Florida. Their presence increased the risk to the safety and sustainability of these areas. With this large body, dealing with pythons requires professional skills and caution. Florida farmers have developed special methods to effectively catch python. They move gently to areas with pythons using just enough strength to catch them and hold them tightly. Holding the python's head is important to avoid the risk of being bitten and requires creativity and specialized technique. The python catchers must have strong health to face challenges of the python size and strength. Every day, they can catch three to five pythons which is a job that requires a lot of patience and discipline. Although the job of catching pythons seems simple, but behind it are great efforts of the community to minimize the negative impact of pythons on the environment and the daily lives of residents. To better understand a python invasion situation in the United States, let's continue watching this video. European starlings, famous for their flocking behavior, often move in large groups, numbering up to thousands of birds. These migratory birds follow a seasonal pattern, heading south during the winter and returning north in the summer. It is easy to see flocks of European starlings flying in the sky, especially in spring. European starling descend on the fields when crops begin to flower and bear fruit. It is possible that newly harvested fields are also their migration targets, while the birds' migratory habits 
are picturesque, the European starling pose a significant threat to the American farmlands. They eat flowers, fruits, and seeds of many different crops, leading to reduced productivity and affected product quality. Estimates suggest that European starling causes about $1 billion in animal damage to the U.S. agricultural industry. Not limited to field crops, European starlings also destroy orchards and fruit trees. Their insatiable appetite leads to reduced yields and reduced fruit quality. The fruit industry in the United States loses an estimated $100 million each year due to this invasive bird species. The impact of the European starling extends beyond rural areas affecting urban landscapes and residential areas. Their tendency to form large flocks creates noise pollution and environmental disturbance. Furthermore, these birds pose a traffic hazard when they fly across the road, increasing the risk of incidents. They often gather on large trees on city streets at night, causing cars and motorbikes to get dirty and seriously affected by their waste. European starlings cause damage to approximately 2 million vehicles each year in the United States with damaged windshields, headlights, and paint. The average repair cost for a car damaged by European starlings is about $1,000. Lawns around people's houses are also often disrupted by flocks of European starlings. During the early morning or late afternoon, European starlings are most concentrated in the fields, creating a lively and captivating spectacle for nature lovers. Hunting European starlings during the day on open ground is an art and requires skill and patience. Hunters use hunting tools and combined with devices that emit the sounds of European starlings to attract them closer. The talented hunter desperately positions himself among foliage or trees, waiting with exceptional patience as flocks of European starlings flies closer. When the right moment comes, the hunter takes aim and uses technique to take down each and every one of them. They are not normal individuals, but they're passionate artisans who understands the biology and the behavior of this bird. European starling hunting has been strictly regulated by the United States government since 1958. These regulations not only requires hunters to have a valid license, but also requires them to comply with all rules safely. Particular attention is given to use of smaller caliber bullets in order to minimize the impact on other bird species and maintain balance in the ecosystem. To achieve optimal efficiency in hunting, hunters need to be carefully choosing a suitable hiding location 
the location chosen must not only be close enough for them to carry out the kill, but also far enough to avoid being detected by the cunning birds. During hunting, the hunter can catch about 50 to 100 European starling per day. Depending on their personal technique and experience, respecting and complying with hunting regulations is not only a legal obligation, but also a guarantee for the sustainability of European starling populations. This is an important role to maintain the natural balance and protect the bird's habitat, as well as preserving the responsibility of the hunting tradition. Hunting European starlings at night can be more effective than daytime pursuits. These birds often seek refuge and rest in the nooks and crannies of the farm buildings at night, making them more vulnerable to predation than during daytime movement and foraging activities. Night hunting of European starling is often done using spotlights to illuminate farm structures. When these birds are suddenly exposed to light, they become startled, making them easier targets for hunters. According to a research that was published in the Journal of Wildlife Management, about 50% more European starlings are hunted at night than during the day. Several factors contributing to the ease of night hunting for European starlings. First, these birds are often less vigilant at night because they are less concerned about natural predators. Second, European starlings tend to fly more slowly at night, making them easier targets for the hunters. However, night hunting can contribute to noise pollution and have negative impacts on the surrounding environment. While the effectiveness of night hunting for European starlings is clear, it is important for hunters to prioritize safety and minimize potential environment impacts. Responsible hunting practices, along with an awareness of the risks involved, can ensure a balance between effective wildlife management and ethical considerations in pursuing Starling's European rocks at night. How are invasive bird species being dealt with by farmers today? Let's continue watching the rest of the video.
Wild pigs in the United States are not only an invasive species, but also a major source of damage to the agriculture, livestock, and the natural environment. The consequences they bring can reduce agricultural productivity, pose a risk of disease transmission to the livestock, and affect the entire ecosystem. In crop farms, wild boars become annoying rivals of farmers because of their toxic gnawing behavior. They destroy crops, eat seeds, tubers, and fruits, causing heavy damage to agricultural production. This not only reduces farmers' income, but also affects the food supply. Furthermore, wild boars also cause soil erosion, damage irrigation systems, causing soil erosion and reduce soil quality. This greatly affects the stability of the agricultural environment, reducing the ability of soil to regenerate for crops. This animal has omnivorous habits and can consume many different types of food, from plants such as plant seeds, other tubers, fruits, to small animals such as insects, and mice. Wild boars use their snouts and feed to dig in the ground, search for food, and sometimes scrape the ground to create a shelter. On livestock farms, Wild boars attack the livestock, eating their food and drinking water. This is not only affecting the health and condition of pits, but also increases the risk of infection with dangerous infectious diseases. Wild boars are active mainly at night. When it's dark and few people are active, this increases the likelihood of encountering them especially in rural areas and primary forests. The greatest threat not only comes from the attack and corrosion that wild boars carry, but also from their ability to be a source of disease transmission. The wild boars can carry many dangerous infectious diseases such as African swine fever, swine tuberculosis, swine fever, and foot and mouth disease. These diseases not only threaten the health of pets, but can also spread to humans, endangering the entire community. Hunting feral hogs by planes in the United States is an effective strategy for controlling and preventing invasive species. Implemented since the 1980s, this method has become increasingly popular and widely used in recent years. The cost of hunting by plane is not small, ranging from $1,500 to $5,000 per flight. However, this cost includes not only the rental of the plane, but also the cost of hiring hunters, the cost of ammunition, and many other costs. Hunting by planes offers many important advantages. First of all, this method is highly effective, capable of destroying a large number of wild boars in a short time.
This helps minimizing their impact on the environment and also protects farmers from damage caused by invasive species. In particular, the use of aircraft and hunting also ensures safety for people and pets. By flying at a high altitude, the aircraft avoids wild boar attacks, reduces the risk of accidents, and at the same time, increases the accuracy in placing bullets. When conducting aerial hunting in the United States, obtaining a license is important to ensure safety and regulatory compliance. These licenses include wild boars hunting licenses, pilot licenses, and hunting equipment licenses. A wild boar hunting license is one of the most important steps to ensure that hunting takes place according to regulations. This requires a solid understanding of hunting rules, as well as the ability to identify wild boars and manage the hunting environment. A pilot license is a necessary condition to ensure that the operator has the ability to control the aircraft safely and accurately. This is important to avoid unwanted accidents during hunting and ensures the safety of both the pilot and those participating in the activity. A hunting license is another essential factor especially when using firearms from an aircraft. This ensures that the operator has the skills to use hunting equipment correctly and safely, while complying with relevant legal regulations. Crop fields and orchards are often the primary foraging areas for feral pigs, making them easy to access and control. Airplanes make this more convenient, increasing the ability to locate and hunt them. Jungle areas, where wild boars often hide as well, are also a prime target for aerial hunting. The aircraft's flexibility in locating and accessing hard-to-reach areas helps improve the effectiveness of hunting activities. Thanks to the control measures, including aerial hunting, the wild boar population in the United States has decreased significantly by 2023. The population is estimated to have decreased from 5 million in 2000 to about 2.5 million. Despite significant achievements, wild boars continue to threaten the environment and pose a risk to people. Maintaining and developing control measures is important to ensure a balance between the survival of this animal and the protection of her habitat. Therefore, controlling and preventing wild boars' invasion remains an issue that requires continuous attention and action. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.